This one right here is a, a Model 27 that was made in around 1935, 1936, so right in there somewhere. And I found this, believe it or not, this is the only guitar I've ever bought, only thing I've ever bought off eBay. But I uh, found this guitar, it's never been played. And uh, any scratches that has on it, I'm ashamed to tell you that they're mine at this point. And, and it, these are beautiful guitars. Square necks are hard to find. Square neck uh, Model 27s. And, but this is one. And you can see it's got a pretty, it's pretty simple wood and uh, a nice sunburst on the back, but nothing really, nothing really that jumps out at you. But they were just beautiful sounding guitars and Model 27s only had binding on the top. They had no binding on the back, as opposed to the later versions, the more expensive versions. The Model 27 uh, was a $27 guitar. And as the models went up, that's what they, that's what they costed. And uh, like I played a Model 37 most of the time uh, in my Bluegrass Past, and uh, that was a $37 guitar, uh, dollar guitar, brand new. But this is, this is a really great guitar. And it was, it was used by Josh Graves, the Model 27, that is. He used a Model 27 a lot in the early Flat & Scruggs days. And there was even uh, a fabled blonde top, uh, uh, a, C, a spruce top guitar that was made by Dobro that he played uh, on Randy Lynn Rag. And we don't know what happened to that guitar. Maybe if somebody knows, they can let us know and uh, we'll swoop in and grab it. <laughs> this is the sound that I grew up with and that this is the sound that penetrated my heart and uh, made me love the Dobro guitar. And, but it's just this sound is... <laughs> pretty hard sounding. It's not as deep and resonant as the uh, later models were and what we have now, the hybrids, you know, they're, they're, uh, they look like Dobros, but they don't sound a lot like them. But these sometimes came with a, uh, a pressed cone instead of a, a, a spun cone like we usually see these days. These were pressed and they were harder and and, you know, the, the, they sounded different. They sounded even harder than this one does right now because I've put, a, I've put a, a, a new spun cone in this one, a, a legend cone from Paul Beard. I, we put that in there. And this guitar I used on a, a, the first, uh, well, both uh, recorded studio albums of the Earls of Leicester. This is the guitar that I used mainly and used some of my old Model 37. Uh, but... This is the guitar that this is the sound I wanted, you know. And when, when I play any kind of Uncle Josh song these days, if I play, if I play it on any other guitar, it just doesn't sound right to me. It doesn't have the essence uh, of of the real Josh Grave sound. These are the only guitars that I think sound good uh, in a flat and Scruggs mode, you know, in a real bluegrass setting. Uh, but it's exciting. They're exciting to play. They sound different, but they give you back that sound that you fell in love with in the first place, or for fellows like me, anyway. Uh, I'll, I'll put this one down. I'll, pu I'll pick up the next um, version of uh, guitar that Dobro made. Was, uh, like I was saying, Model 37, which is bound both sides. And it's a little fancier, has a little fancier finish. This one has a bound fingerboard. And also, uh, what's really different about these two guitars is, let me get it, put it back up here. I'm going to put these guitars side by side here so you can see them. One, the Model 27 has a uh, slotted headstock. And the headstocks, you can go back and tell how old the guitar is by the headstock, by the, the slots in the headstock. The first ones were chiseled, really chiseled, done by hand, and they have a straight cut at the top and at the bottom instead of being routed out, like this one was in later years, Do Pieris. Uh, but what, <laughs> changing strings on these was a monster for me. And uh, so I opted out for 
the flat headstock like a regular guitar headstock. And uh, they're easier to change strings on. And, and Josh posed in, uh, on one of the record covers with a guitar exactly like this. So that's the one I went after when I was a kid. And it's a little deeper sounding. It's not quite as, as uh, what they used to call tinny. But I never thought tinny was a bad thing when it came to dobros. It was a... Uh, they both have uh, barrels in them. That one has what they called a parallelogram pattern in the cutouts in the, in the barrel, in the resonator. Uh, this one is round. The holes are round in this one. And it, I don't know, they're just different guitars made out of pre, you know, pretty much the same kind of wood. The, the grain in these, in these guitars was, uh, was sort of a rolled on. It's a fake grain. And, uh, but, you know, they all looked alike. Same guy was rolling, rolling the wood and then filling in, you know, and then they'd sunburst them a little bit. But, you know, they weren't, they weren't really expensive guitars. I mean, the materials weren't that expensive until you got down to the metal parts, I suppose. But, you know, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the old headstock. That's the one that, that's the one I like. That's the one I'm after. Uh, but just owning these guitars, everybody that plays dobro guitar should, try, should own one of these old guitars. And, uh, you know, if anybody's ever around and I've got one of the old ones, if you want to play it, you're welcome to it because they just, there's something different about them, really different. And uh, it's, uh, it's part of the whole Dobro story, you know, you need to, you need to have that too. Carry that around with you. But the, this, is, uh, this guitar was uh, more like... Graves had two guitars that he used in his, all his recording career. Julie, which was a Model 27, and Cliff, who, which was given to him by Cliff Carlisle and, uh, in the late 50s, early 60s. And it, it was a guitar. It was a Model 37, and Josh later on had, if you see it, it's got seahorses. <laughs> it's got seahorses inlaid in it right here. Bobby Wolf inlaid seahorses in it. I don't know who gave them to him, why he wanted them there, but hey, Josh Graves tell you, put seahorses in my guitar, you put the seahorses in the guitar. So Bobby did that. And, uh, and this, this particular one has a, we're going to get really geeky here for a second. This particular guitar has a really skinny headstock, as Terry Bauckham called it, skinny, skinny peg head. And it doesn't flare out, you know, at the top that much, uh, or at the sides. It it pretty much stays straight, and it's exactly like this guitar is exactly the same headstock as the one that I played on the J.D. Crow's uh, 0044 record, and uh, a lot of things after that until I you know, moved on to a different guitar, uh, but. I almost can see the same man uh, sitting at his workbench and, and shaping those two guitar headstocks. Maybe the same day, maybe the same week, you know, somewhere back in 1936, 35, 36. Sat there and made these two guitars. My guitar, my old guitar, and, and this one, which is an old guitar, but recent for me. So uh, there's, some, there's some old Dobro story there. And now let me show you. Uh, Paul Beard came up with this new, new old guitar, and it's called a Deco. Uh, that's just the name of the, the brand name of the guitar. It's a Beard guitar, but it's a... And I used, I used this guitar. It's a, it's a perfect uh, copy of the, my old uh, Model 27 there, except it has a, it has a flat headstock easier to change strings, faster. Uh, but the sound is, is kind of the same. It's got that bucket sound, kind of like an old metal bucket sound in there that it's not really loud and not a really sustainy guitar, but it uh, makes its point. It gets right straight to the point. And, but uh, Josh could make 
those things just sing. And so, so did uh, Bashful Brother Oswald played uh, a Model 27 as well. So they were pretty popular guitars for those guys to play. Uh, and I think they were around more. You could find those more. These uh, flat headstocks started showing up, and they, a lot of those were regal bodies, they call those. And um, they were made, the bodies were made in Chicago, so they were a little bit different than the California-made Dobros. Uh, I guess they got behind in orders. Can you imagine that? Too many orders for Dobros. We have to, we have to sub this out to another to another place so they can make the bodies for us. Well, my, my old Dobro and most of those Model 37s with the flat headstocks, Mike Aldridge's Dobros to the, the two that he had. I forget the uh, numbers on the 4, 412 or 401, 402, somewhere in there. Um, the, the old, uh, that, that guitar right there doesn't have one, but I have, I have 202 and, uh, and 212 at home that are Model 37. So they were made a little bit before my old one and uh, Mike's, Mike Aldridge's Dobros. Josh's, I didn't get the serial number off of Josh's, but it was, it was uh, I think, more of a California-made body. Uh, little, just a little bit different finish on it, but they're kind of basically the same guitar. And so we've got, we've got this new version of the old guitars that Paul makes, which are just great knockout guitars. And I actually played this one on the uh, Earls of Leicester Live at the CMA uh, Music uh, Hall there at the, uh, the, at the Hall of Fame, at the Country Music Hall of Fame. We cut a record there. And I slipped this guitar, and I just got this guitar, and I slipped it in, and I played it a little bit, and I thought, man, that sounds good. And the action feels better to me than my old Model 37, so, uh, 27, Model 27. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can slip it past the guys. And I played the whole record. I did the whole, the whole show, the whole record on, the, on this guitar. Uh, and uh, the old Model 27 got to set on stage and watch. So... These are interesting, though. I love talking about them, and, and, you know, we Dobro players love seeing them. You know, we don't have to own them. We don't have to play them. We just want to see them because they're so rare. And uh, so we've, we've graduated now from, from these old guitars that, are, that, sound, that were made in the 30s and, and the newer ones that are made as uh, classic examples of those old guitars. Now we're... Now we're mo we've moved on to the, this is, a, this is my Blackbeard guitar. It's made, uh, Paul Beard makes this guitar. And it's just a gigantic sound. You know, it's sound posts instead of, instead of a barrel in there. And uh, the cone sits on uh, a, a ring. Uh, a tone ring, sort of a tone ring, sort of a uh, maple tone ring. And then uh, that all sits on, uh, on dowels, on pegs, and, and some other things that Paul's been working on. I know he's got a, an even stronger material that's with less weight that makes the, and actually passes uh, sound better. And he's always working on things like that. I mean, that's what uh, Paul Beard did, does. That's what... Uh, 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 Mr. Shearhorn did, uh, Rudy Q. Jones did, you know, Rudy Q. Jones, I had one of those, and it's in a museum. I don't have it right now, I mean, it, uh, but it's what I used through most of my recording in the 80s, and uh, that guitar is in, at the Musical Instrument Museum in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, which is an amazing place if you ever get out there. Go see that. They've got one instrument, one of every instrument in the world in there. And, uh, and the countries, and it's a very well done museum. It should go. So if you find yourself in Phoenix, take a run over to MIM. But uh, these guitars, uh, these beard guitars, and the Tim Shearhorn guitars, and, and there are lots of luthiers out there right now that are building great guitars. Wolf, uh, uh, just, you know, we'll go through that. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that later on. We'll, We'll, run, we'll get a list of uh, all the builders in the, that build these 
really wonderful resophonic guitars, as we call them now. And but you know, dope, the Dopier brothers, when they advertised their Dobro brand guitars, they they called them amplophonic guitars. So because of the amplifier built into the guitar, which was an amazing thing for them to think of, and God, just pulled that one out of the air. But the guitars change, the, the sounds of every one of these is different. And just about every, every dobro, dobro guitar that you pick up and play, you're gonna, it's gonna have a different sound than the, the one you played before. They're all different. And that's what I really love about them. They're not stock, there's not a stock sound. They're, and, and it's almost an EQ thing for me if I want to, if I want to play a guitar on a track that I need to cut, slice through the track, I'll go for one of these older, thinner sounding uh, guitars rather than the big ones that are just gonna bog down in the bass and the gu electric guitar and acoustic guitar. You know, it's all the same frequencies, but these older guitars cut through that stuff sometimes uh, where one of these modern guitars can't go. So there you have it, a little detour uh, uh, along the way, a little, take a little break on your brain and just uh, soak up some Dobro history.